Next, you're gonna see a live stream tour that was shot in November 2022. And it's a tour of our factory and it shows how we manufacture our products in a very efficient manner. And we're grateful to show this with the world via AME tour and Paul Wakers. So hopefully you enjoy this tour and take something away. Thank you very much. For today, let's enjoy today. And we're gonna be flying from our home base in Toronto, Canada to Munford, which is about two hours north of London in the United Kingdom. And without further ado, I'm gonna pass you over to Paul Akers. Welcome, Paul, from Japan. Thanks, Richard. Well, it's gonna be pretty cool because Jack's uh, one of the top lean thinkers out there. And Jack, we were just together in Japan, and now you're already back in the UK and you're making all kinds of improvements. So I can't wait to see what you and your team are doing. I've been watching the videos you've been posting. They're just amazing. So uh, let's, let's do it, Jack. Okay, thanks, Paul. You can hear me all okay? Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Good. Okay, Perfect. great. Yep. So thanks, Paul and Richard, for the opportunity. And so this is Jack, and I'm yeah. at JJB Corporation UK Limited. We yeah. manufacture products from sheet metal, and yeah. we've been doing that since around 2010. And we've been on our lean journey for the last three years. We had quite a bit of a struggle in the beginning. The first two years, we really struggled to get the traction and people were engaged in what we was trying to, what, what I was trying to do. Um, it was only a year ago when we met Alex Ramirez, who was taking his team's daily improvements, making them into a short video every day and celebrating them every morning in their morning meetings. So that was no bit, no matter how big or small the improvement was, even 3S, just before and after, even labeling your pen, we was very grateful to see that. And that's where initially I went wrong. You know, we was looking for the big things, but really we, we started small and that's what really helped us. Um, I'm currently standing in our morning meeting area so on the wall, we have the eight wastes and our four criteria for the improvements. And we have the TV above where we watch daily videos of other companies from around the world. And that really helps us get the team engaged in the morning to see exactly what we're doing. And it's a multi-use area. So this is actually our studio where we stage our new products and put them on the wall. So we're quite tight on space. So we make the most of what we have. And this is kind of a product we are manufacturing. Um, all based from sheet metal and at the moment we're taking a strong focus on organization products. On the tour today I'm going to quickly show you around the product flow. So we're going to go directly from raw material to a finished box product. This is a very simple product I designed around a year ago. So we're going to go around the factory so you can see exactly how stage by stage this is manufactured in the lean fashion. Now, so, yeah. Let's go. Jack, yeah. can I say one thing? I think the most interesting thing about what's going on with you guys is that so many of your products are a result of lean thinking, are they not? Yeah, they are indeed. We, I'm, I'm a little bit lazy, so I always look for the easiest way to do things. And right. that's related in a lot of our products. We think, well, the customer wants that too. They don't know it, but they do. You know, Customers want an easy way to store or do something. And that's been our target to make that easy for our customers, you know? I tend and to love how, what we're doing. And how too. successful has those products been, the lean products been for you? I'm curious. Um, well, very, very successful. I mean, really? prior to, uh, at one point, I didn't even know lean existed, I, you know, and we were manufacturing products that filled a gap in the market that made someone's job easier. So I've right. always knew that making a product for someone that eliminates a struggle from their life is going to be good. So, you know, right. like I said, I'm lazy. I, I make products for myself. And that's how we started about 10 years ago. I started a business okay. manufacturing. Amazing. Okay, good. Okay. So we're going to go quickly to the kitchen and bathroom. So after I like, I like, to I, just so you know, I like the shark. The shark head. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I, I like some quirky decoration like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So three years ago, I went on my first Japan study mission with Paul. And the first thing he said to do was sort out the kitchen and bathroom. So when I come back, I spent three weeks in there on my own, refitting it. It was a standard workshop, kitchen and bathroom, black and dirty and not very nice for the employees. So I sat around setting a very high standard and making sure everything had a standard place. We have a cleaning guide Monday to Friday. And every day, two people are responsible for keeping it in top quality condition. Amazing. We have everything is in order with clearly labeled designated home positions, photos on the door to show what's in there. 
we've made it very, very easy. And this is all improvements my team members have made, not just me. So I spent three weeks in here doing the kitchen, tiling, making stuff, but everything else is a result from everyone else, lean thinking, so to speak. Incredible. Wow. Yeah. You're, taking it, you're just taking it to a great <laughs> level, Jack. Amazing. Yeah. We was inspired by FastCap, actually, for the metal on the walls. So, you know, we took a lot of inspiration from you, oh, really. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's our metal. That's our metal. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so simple, and too. In the early days, we took inspiration to use your Kanban cards and everything. But before long, it drove right. us crazy chasing them around. So we yeah. have an easier way. <laughs> so Good what we you. do, the person responsible for looking after the kitchen, they need to check the inventory once a week. It's not too hard, not too much burden, I feel. If we need blitz roll, they'll scan the QR code with their smartphone and that emails the office here who will then order it. Once they've ordered it, it's slid there. And then once the product arrives, they'll put it back and put that back. And we've rolled it out across everywhere. And it was first used here in the kitchen and bathroom. Really? So, and, and I'm assuming there's not a problem with them getting slid mistakenly one side or the other? No, but it only work if you've got dialed in responsible people. If you've got, sure. if you're in your early days of lean, this probably won't work. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. You need cool. responsible, great, great. good people. Great job. Right. Great job. Right. Okay. So we're going to go through to the production now where we turn. No, we're not going to go production. We're going to go where. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to where the Kanbans are produced. Okay. We kind of hacked a inventory system that we actually use a pro forma. Need to mute this. We hacked our inventory system to create a pro forma invoice, but internally on a small piece of label paper. And that's our disposable Kanban, which goes around the whole plant. And we're going to follow that round to see how it works for us. Okay. And this is Alex. Okay who's been with us a couple of years. So see, he see the struggle and then now he's helped implement a lot of these improvements and the workflow. Okay. Hello, yeah, um, so yeah, hi everyone, hi Paul. Um, yes, yeah, so my name's Alex. Um, as Jack said, I deal with sort of the day-to-day -day operations of the business, making sure all the stock inventory and items are going out to customers. Um, believe it or not, when I first started here 18 months ago, I actually started out in customer service. Um, that was my role. Um, emailing customers um quotes so one thing that really got me when i started here i never knew about lean and the first thing that jack said to me when i started was is we're here to serve the customer and that really stuck with me when i first started here um and we started getting a few emails from customers that were a little bit unhappy that they weren't getting their parcels on time um things were taking a little bit longer to go out um so i thought to myself you know what I'll get up out of my chair and we'll go start having a look at the process and sort of see where we can improve to sort of make sure the customer's getting the best value for their money when they're purchasing from us. Um, so I went out into production, um, into packing, um, started looking at the process. Um, and it soon became apparent that the one of the big reasons was we just didn't have enough stock to meet demand for the orders that we had going out. So orders were being rushed through very quickly, which in turn was causing defects, which has been passed on to the customer. Um, so what we did after quite a few bumps of very hard work, um, we started getting all the stock numbers correct on the system, um, putting minimum numbers against all our stock levels to make sure that we didn't run out. Um, and yeah, pleased to say, I mean, we send, I would say 2000 plus orders every single week and really? we're getting it. All, yeah. All we're getting from customers now is there's no more, where's my order. It's oh, thank you very much for getting your order out to me really quickly. Um, and that's changed just through changing certain things and actually having a look and stopping and thinking, why was this happening? and trying to sort it to make it better for the customer when they're purchasing from us. That's amazing. Lovely. Brilliant. Thank you, Alex. Okay, okay so, so what, what happens, happens here from our stock system? Hey, mute that. Sorry. Okay. Alex from our stock system prints the Kanban, but he doesn't have it physically printed here. It comes out the printer at the completely other end of the building to eliminate the excess motion of taking it there. So we're going to go to there now. We're going to walk quickly there. We're going to be back in this area because this is where the product ends up at. It's a beautiful shop, Jack. Thanks. It, it's great to hear the deadly waste in an English accent as well. <laughs> <laughs> so these buildings, this is our last building we actually built ourselves three years ago. 
And as you can see, we have five CNC laser cutting machines, and this is what we use to turn the raw material into finished product. So majority of our products all are based from sheet metal. Mm -hmm. So if we go over here, Alex's computer is directly connected to this printer. So he prints the requirements. So this is the product SKU, how many is needed and deliver it to the laser. So the laser operator will tear these off and produce their own parts. So it's very easy. Before that was a lot of excess motion carrying around Kanbans, um, but now it's one thing, single thing. So this is an example of that product that was on the office wall. That was cut, imagine that was being cut. So we're gonna follow that round and I'm gonna show you each stage it's gonna be. So Jack, um, I have a question for you. So sure. there, there are many lasers there. Is there a printer at every laser or there's just one printer and then he, then the operator takes to the laser they're gonna produce it on? Yep, one separate, each laser, we use different lasers to do different thicknesses material. Okay. So okay. that's one printer in the middle. Okay, got it. So that one printer, yep. you, they then allocate it accordingly, the laser that they need. Exactly. Yeah, the, the operator does that. And that's throughout the day, at least every hour, there will be a look at the inventory system and print off the requirements. Okay. And then what about programming the laser? Does he scan the barcode? Is there a barcode on the label that, that then programs the laser? How does that So, work? for instance, on this particular product, on the laser, there will be a nest of these parts. So all he has to do is open ID 305, and there will be a full sheet quantity of that if that's what we're producing. And then he'll cut a sheet of those components okay, or how many of us are required. So we do have a range of around 1500 different products we produce. Right. This being one that's very, very simple, like one piece. Others, we make assemblies of things. But this is just an example I wanted to show you guys what we actually do. So this okay, is sheet metal. It. So we actually had to make a robot cell to produce them. And rather than go into an external company to make this for us, who would charge us a lot of money, we decided to make it in-house. So we bought the robot and then we had the press machine and we had one clever guy called Chris, who we're gonna see in a minute, who put it all together. So everything else you see he actually designed and manufactured here. All the in-feed conveyor, the suction system, everything. Okay. We even incorporated a print head, which actually prints the product barcodes. And that used to be an extra day and another process of, of the labels being applied. Paul, if you could meet Chris, who is the guy who put it all together. Okay. And if you have any questions, is the guy who learned on the job putting it together. So you're not you're not intimidated, Chris, by the idea of having to set that thing up. Well, it wasn't just a simple idea. It was the whole process that we actually gone through the years, actually having all the machine, which was generating massive amount of defects. Um, and we've been looking and thinking of solutions and, you know, working, learning day by day on improvements on the old machine or how we could implement them into old one and, and coming up with or even new solution as this is and and building it step by step right chris let me ask you a question talk to me about defects where how does that fit into your whole thinking about production Is that a difficult question uh, it's it's not difficult how am i thinking into defect what it's 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 a waste isn't it so it's something that we don't want to have um especially in these days where everything is expensive no one wants to pay for something that is not needed not necessary isn't it so we as we are humans, we don't want to waste the food. We don't want to waste our lives. <laughs> we, we want to live. And I, that's how I see it personally. Right, right, right. So, so I, I think the, the interesting thing is a lot of people just think about production, 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 but you're not necessarily thinking about production. You're thinking about eliminating defects. Yes, the same, the same as, as in our personal lives. If, you know, if we have our car, lights not working this is this is you know creating hazard in our life we if something not going to be as it should be it might result tragically on it so that's why you that's why i work personally every day to to fix what bugs me and and right, right. if i'm seeing something being problematic fix it repair it really or find a new solution different for it 
so many people just tolerate the defects, think of it as part of the process, but it sounds like you're really hunting them down. I think that's what I'm getting at. Working on it every day. Yeah, yeah. awesome. <laughs> great that's, job. That's a great attitude. Great, great attitude. attitude. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Sure. Chris, thank you. Yeah, thank you, too. Okay, next we're gonna just mute that. We're gonna go over to the folding area where this product will be folded. No, we're not. I'm terrible today. I've practiced this quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> right. This that's why is, you have a team. Yeah, that's why I have a team. They're pointing at me behind the scenes. So in this particular build cell is where we produce our oversized items. So this is actually a spray booth which we design and manufacture. And this build cell here has been put together recently to facilitate that in the easiest possible way. So these are all improvements that my guys have made. I haven't run around crazy chasing things. This is Swabek. He's done a great job organizing his tools and equipment to make his job easy. And, you know, so he's not hunting for things. And we just love making and doing things in an easy fashion. <laughs> well, so Jack, you guys are actually making spray booths now. Yeah, yeah. And how did you get into doing that? Did people come to you? I mean, that no. was totally outside your thing, what, you're, what you'd normally do. Of course. So there's a turntable that goes on here, and it's a spray booth. You know why we've got oh this? Oh, my because gosh. We... <laughs> that is incredible. Been... Who's, who's yeah. buying that? Who's, what kind of customer is buying that? In industrial customers. They're, they're not a big seller. We probably sell one a week at the moment, you know? I love um, it. That is beautiful. <laughs> what, is that, what does that cost? Uh, two and a half thousand pounds. Oh man, I would take that in five seconds. <laughs> bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know why we have this is because we needed one ourselves. Yeah. And we looked online, we looked to buy one. And why the hell we want to buy one? We have the machines to make one. <laughs> and I said to Chris, let's, let's make one. And he's like, okay, sure. Okay. But for us, it's like playing, you know? Oh, and it's beautiful. Chris is so crazy with what he does. Inside here, we didn't go buy in a shop bought fan housing. We actually make the fan impellers, the blades. All we do is buy a motor and he, we manufacture the rest here from You're sheet metal. Me. <laughs> Have you got fan blades here? Yeah, come through, I'll show you. Get so we out buy in, of here. We buy in the motor we, and this we make this. We design and manufacture that fan blade, you know, Nobody does that, I don't think. We're, maybe we're crazy. Actually, Chris is crazy. He's the one who done it and said he wanted to do it. That's brilliant. I think yeah. that is outrageous. Yeah, me too. It's, it's amazing. What You know, we have a very good can-do attitude. I say we can build anything, but probably not a satellite that goes to space. Chris says, yeah, sure we could. And I'm like, maybe not that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jack, that's a beautiful story. I love yeah. that. And, and many stories are like that. We we turn our hands to everything because we've been let down by so many professionals in our lives. You won't believe it. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Yeah. So this product comes to this area flat. This is Stuart. He's been here a couple of years. Stuart. And as you can see, again, he's made, you know, all his tools are laid out perfectly. He knows the eight wastes. He's eliminated them every day. And he's doing a fantastic job, you know, from when he first come here. He's made hundreds of small improvements every day. And you can ask him any question you like, Paul, like he did. Yeah, Stuart. So what, what's your thinking about lean? Tell me about uh, how do you feel about lean thinking? Uh, how do I feel about lean thinking? Um, well, I think it's better than any other workplace, really. The way you have to think about things and do things and the concept you have on things is a lot better than why? a normal workplace. Why, 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 why? Uh, because it makes the job easier and a better workflow, better quality and a better place to work really all around. Yeah, awesome. Would you do, do you do any lean at home at all? Do you think about it when you go home or no, just at work? Um, uh, yeah, well, I've got a story about my mother once I was at her house and she was cooking food and there was a timer the other side of the room and I kept seeing her walk backwards and forwards to check the timer. So I said to her, well, why don't you move the timer above the cooker, which saves you walking across the room all them times which he did and yeah all so right. that was good as well good for you it's fun isn't it it's a big game yeah it's fun problem solving it makes you a lot better at problem solving so what, what's what's your favorite improvement that you've done in your area the one that's helping you the most 
Uh, right now, my best improvement is probably this trolley that holds a product on it. And it has every part I need for the product on it, as oh. you can see. Then before, we used to just pile them all on a pallet, uh, on a pallet, and then like it would all be piled on top of each other, and it would take me longer to fold it and longer to process it. But now it's literally, as soon as I get the order, it's done within half an hour. So love it, it saves me a lot of time. <laughs> Yeah, oh my yeah, gosh, wow, headache. that's well done. I love it. Yes, love it. That's very cool. So you're building yeah. the order then on that, right? Uh, yeah, well, it's not just that the only sort of trolley we've done that with. Like over here, I've got a trolley with all spare parts on it, this brew trolley here. Whereas this, a year ago, all these parts used to be scattered around the workshop everywhere and piling up. But now everything's in one place where I need it. And yeah, no running around to look for parts. Everyone knows where each part goes now. Everything's labeled, so it's a lot oh, easier. That's very cool. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. Okay, Thank thanks, you. Stuart. Thank you. Thank Great you, Stuart. Job. So this area is where we turn this flat part into this folded part. So it's a product flow. We've still got a lot of improvements to do in how we move our products around the factory from lasers to fold in, we're not so fantastic on the trolley. So that's a big improvement we've been trying to work on. So we're gonna go around now to our powder coating department. So when products are folded, they get queued up here. And this is what's gonna be folded. And really this is only about, uh, they were cut and produced probably two or three hours ago. So we don't have products here sitting here overnight. Everything's constantly flowing and being processed. So if we go now into this powder coat booth, this is where black and brown things are powder coated. So Damien has been here and he's set up all his tools and equipment. This is another story of someone being very responsible for their tools and equipment and making their job easier. And I think I've really had an ethos of people to make them enjoy their work and being responsible for their tools and equipment. And I think it gives gives them great satisfaction of doing their job. Mm. Um, we actually reuse the waste black powder and it goes round and round. Um, and again, we designed and manufactured these ovens, this spray booth. Um, and that's because we had that can-do attitude. We didn't want to go buy it, so we built it. That is just amazing, Jack. It is, it's oh, incredible. Actually. Yeah. And if we walk this way, we have so certain products obviously are not black or brown. So we have another, another exact same oven and, and spray booth set up where we process colored parts. So you can see some parts there hanging now. Um, we have the oven on the right. And again, everything's where it should be. And people are making their job easier so we can produce That's good quality for the customer. Really clean powder coating operation. Yeah, yeah. So this is where this part would be turned from bare steel to a pink powder coated finish and the product flow will go this way. And why is it, why is it pink? Dare I Pretty ask? and pink. <laughs> because we have black, white or a pink one. Pink, I felt that customers might like this in their factory because the product is actually called no excuse cleaning bracket. You, know, you can't not see that on a machine or equipment not to keep your stuff clean. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> okay. And which one's the best seller? What color? Um, maybe the black, actually. <laughs> yeah. I wish it was the pink one. So this is a new actual building we've put up in the last six weeks, and we've just moved in. So we still got a bit of things to sort out. So this is our two-bin system, nut and bolt rack, inspired by Ryan at CT Matters. And it's such a great benchmark for organizing nuts and bolts yes isn't it beautiful and you got a picture of it's, everything on the front that's all awesome. exactly and the way it works once this box is empty the person would scan the qr code which emails the office and then they would purchase more once they once they arrive they go back in the box and back in the rack and since doing this has never been any stock problems on nuts and bolts it's been you know it runs itself it's fantastic Mm, that is incredible. And you pull the back one forward, obviously. Exactly. Pull the back one forward. The empty one goes on the end of this rack. It's so simple. You just got to yeah, stop yeah. and think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is a new work cell we've put together since my Japan trip. 
I think I sent you in in Japan, Paul. I really wanted some small individual work cells where we can replicate products and make lots of improvements. This is actually one of them we started work on. So we have a product where we have to stick at the side panels and right here is exactly where they are, you know, it's so easy. I put three dispensers in the back and, you know, it's so easy to work and you can't get it wrong. Amazing. Wow. Um, and this, this is actually another new product that's been, you can slot on things and it, it's, it, it's, yeah, it's changing what we do and then it's improving what the customer can have as, have as well. And you made all the benches and everything? We make everything. <laughs> me, me and Chris actually put this building up. This one, uh, well, all of them we put up. I'm not saying this one, but this one, we literally moved in six weeks ago. So this machine manufactures the cardboard packaging. And what happens is when the products arrive in this area, the Kanbans, which you've seen earlier, come directly over to this desk and go into a slot here, much like a restaurant. Okay. Oh, wow. And then on this desk, they know to produce, say, 510 of that particular box or package, and also print the labels just in time exactly what's needed. That's great. And you're, you got and you're one, doing one... that, Jack, once again, why are you cutting your own car, uh, corrugated out instead of just buying the boxes so you reduce the inventory? Yeah, because we got nearly, well, a thousand, over a thousand products, we did start buying in dedicated boxes for each product, and we run yeah. out of room so quick, we don't have much room here. So now we don't store inventory of the boxes, we can change the design. If we don't like it, we can change within right. 10 minutes, you know, and when we launch a new product, we, you don't, when you launch a new product, we don't know whether it's going to sell that great. But with this, we we can make one box and you know and sell it with no risk of having a, a, a big inventory full of the cartons. What a brilliant business! Yeah, model. It, mm. it is. It's great because you got less packaging yeah. as well going inside because yeah. you got different sizes going in a standard box. And what do yeah. they do with the packaging? So you're helping the environment as well. Incredible. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And along here these are products which have been probably laser cut a few hours ago powder coated ready to be packaged um and what are assembly those, what desk are, what, are, what are the green ones i'm just curious what are those green products the green ones are a lockable parcel box so to stop porch pirates so you'd put that on your part on your driveway or by your front door and amazon will put the parcel inside and lock it oh, to keep your okay. parcels safe God, you guys wow. are clever stuff. Um, so, so Jack, wood, question. Wood, yeah. Uh, yeah. Paul has a, a goal. Um, every time an order comes in, they've got two hours. Maybe it's one hour now. I'm not sure because it's been a while since two, two I, I dived in. Still two hours to get the order shipped <laughs> out. What, what's your goal? Do you have a? Do you set a goal? Depending, obviously, on um, the product. Yeah. 99% of our products we all ship the same day. There's probably if maybe no, maybe 5% we allow seven day production time. So the spray booths, which you've seen, we, we have a seven day turnaround on production. But as we've been making it for a year now is we're getting more and more lean in the process, we now can turn one of them down in about a day and a half. So if you ordered one right now, it would ship on Friday. Wow. Wow. Jack, are you making wood stoves there? What's that wood stove for? Yeah, that's a wood stove we produce. Really? Yeah. It's, it, how thick is steel? You're cutting big, pretty heavy steel on that. Oh, uh, well, that is quarter inch plate. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Wow. And is that popular? Uh, at, currently it is, yeah, because energy prices have gone through the roof. Gosh, amazing what you're making. It, it yeah. is. It's unbelievable. And the best how, thing. How many hits a day do you get on your website, Jack? Uh, I don't know. I can ask someone how many. Ten thousand, ten, around ten thousand. Wow. Um, so yeah, this area. It gets packaged. 
So the bracket here, this is where it turns into a finished package item. Simple as that. Wow. So we're going to go now to where the products would travel to leave and go into the shipping and the grocery aisles. So through this area, you can see everything's got a standard location. And this is where products will queue up to be powder coated. All the standardized boxes, we have four standard size boxes we actually buy in. Um, and at another QR code ordering system. Very cool. Eliminate, yeah. This has been set up a couple of weeks ago. So I think on our trial for this, our cardboard packing machine was actually here. So this has all been moved in the last few weeks. Got, Jack, I don't get it. You got a wooden workbench there. It should be made out of metal, shouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, this has this been- prototype. <laughs> yeah, this has been put together in the last couple of weeks. Really? So we're, we're, we're running the experiment and this cart here goes outside for when we're packing oversized products on pallets. Ah, I didn't know so you metal workers know how to work with wood. Yeah, of course I do. I used to be a carpenter. <laughs> Good for you, man. That's, I make I, everything out I, of wood. I don't even know how to yeah, make it. I started my life actually with a, a wood turning lathe that when I was 10. Really, wow. Yeah. Okay. So probably, just quickly, why we're made passing. From old, old pallets, maybe. Yeah, exactly. We, yeah. Well, that's who we are, you know. Uh, again, this is the first use of the QR code ordering system for our powder coat. And it works fantastic. We're not really chasing no caravan idea. cards around. Yeah, it's really good. We've yeah, never had, since doing that, I've never had a problem where we've run out of any powder coat in or anything. It's been it's so, so fantastic. And they're, and they're just yeah. scanning it with their phone, right? Exactly. It emails the office, but the actual one for our metal, we've made that actually email the supplier. So it doesn't even go to our office anymore. Really? So we're not even got to do the administration for forwarding the email. So it goes direct to supplier. And I think yeah. we are going to update that to go direct to supplier too. Perfect. Yeah, so the product, the finished product basically comes to this area now and goes onto our grocery aisles that actually face the door directly as the products leave in the building. Um, before we go up to the, up the grocery aisle and show you the other end, this packing team focus board. I learned this at a recent uh, tour of Toyota engine plant in Wales, UK. Okay. And what they do, they meet in smaller teams. So we do this once here and once in production with only the people that it involves. So this is where we focus on fixing smaller problems. So we have ongoing tasks. An example is um, table and lights in packing. Basically, they needed improving. So once we've spoke about that as a group, we'll highlight orange. Um, and then every day we'll review that. Has it been done? What do you need to make that happen? And when it's done, we highlight it green. So it's very visual and easy to track things. And it's, it's great for managing their more complicated tasks that you can't just tell someone to go do. It's really, right. really right. great improvement. Amazing. Yep. How was the Toyota this, plant tour? It was really good. I was there for a week and it was learning about the TPS system. It's a bit, for me, I'm a simple thinker. It's a bit too much for what I need to know. Right. Really, I learned all I need to know from you, Paul, so, and two second lean, and, and Alex Ramirez, you, you know, leave things better than you found it, eliminate the waste. There you go, job done. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing, Jack. Well, it is yeah. simple, that's for sure. Yeah, so grocery roll, everything has been produced here, it will last us a week or two, and everything here was being manufactured in the last week or two. Mm. So, for instance, this finished product will go on the shelf, it doesn't go there, but you get the idea i really i really think jack you have one of, one of the coolest business models ever oh really well because you thank get you to be so creative and you can build anything and you can just you can just and, and you know you're not you yep. know i don't feel like you know as, as a person that develops products you know a lot mm. of times you just well can we do that it's gonna cost so much money for the inventory we're gonna have to deal with yep. this deal with that and yep. you've, you've you've created a process where you, 
there really isn't any encumbrance to come out with a new product and seeing if it works. Yeah, exactly. We could dream up a product right now and have it on sale tomorrow if we really, you know, if we wanted. Sure. sure. Um, and yeah, I, and that's what I enjoy doing. And I think everyone here does too. Yeah, um, exactly. This rack here, we ship a lot of products which are not boxed. So these are metal brackets and we use gravity because it's free and it flows directly down to the picking area. So as you can see, there's lots of variations of metal brackets. The one we showed, see earlier that the robot producing. Um, right. So they're picked, a customer might buy five of them, six of them and a variation. So we can see now Swavek is picking the order to the customer requirements. Straps them on the strapping machine. And then feel at the other end is producing the cardboard boxes and then puts them down the ramp again because gravity is free to Swavek who has the box ready. Once the product's in the box, ah, so it was goes one, down guy's, here. one guy's feeding yep. the box, the other guy's putting the box in and then feeding it right back to him for the final yep. packaging. Yeah, Clever. so he's checking it, yeah, he's checking it, putting the leaflet in and sealing it and then putting it onto the pallet for the, the orders going out. And, wow, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And this was an example of stopping what we're doing. And we took three, three weeks of morning in, in improvement time to keep improving this. And this was all stuff we had in the yard from other projects, you know? And we, and we just tech screwed and cable tied and kind of threw it together. And it worked so well. Now I'm I'm watching him right now. He's going to build a box. When's he going to build a box? Oh, okay, so he's building the box right now. Yep. So he's so nobody's ever waiting on anybody. There's always a, a little bit of a little bit of uh, inventory between the two of them, just as a buffer. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Beautifully yep. done. Wow. Yeah. So he's going to put yeah. And we've got an option to have, when we're busy, busy in the summer, we'll put some on the other side. So we have two people feeding boxes. Oh, that's incredible. Really yeah. well. Done. It works, it work, works very well. Well, most people would never but, think to connect the work like that. That's fantastic. Yeah. We, we stood there with bits of string and sticks and what could we do? You know, you really have to stop sure, and think, sure, what sure. can we do? And even if it's crazy, we want any crazy idea, you know, we'll do it. <laughs> It's an experiment, and you just run it. Yeah, yep. exactly. Run the experiment. So, so we're going to go back in the office now. Yeah. Jack, remind me as you're walking. How many employees do you have? Uh, currently fifteen. Fifteen we employees. We was up at twenty. Yeah, we was up at twenty. Um, yeah. We changed some people, and you know, you have to change the people or change the people. I think Tom that's, Hughes said that. That's exactly right. And and when you first were doing this type of business. How long from when you drank the juice to when you got everybody, all your 15 people, convinced that this is the right way to go? Well, probably. So once I come back from Japan I, and I implemented uh, the lean bathroom kitchen, so to speak, I still didn't get that great traction. I was thinking, how the hell am I going to do that everywhere? And I was thinking, me, how am I going to do that everywhere? Mm -hmm. And um, I went to Japan twice, the second time to see what was going on and, you know, ask for more questions. And I come back and then I went to Riverside, California for a lean summit and I learned a lot there. We went to visit Ryan at Seaton Matters and it was very much being in the lean community and lean maniacs with Dave. He, you know, seeing so much good information and videos. And then Alex Ramirez come along two years after I started Lean Journey. And that's only that only then I started at the basics again, free S in every day. That's yeah. really when it changed for me. So it's mm -hmm. so I, I was trying too hard and really, you know, it's really have to start small and very, very, very simple. To quote Ken Mogi, everything starts small, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly that. And, and, and I truly statement. believe that when he, when he said that, I've never forgot that when he said that that was the first time he said everything starts small. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that concludes the tour and hopefully I've shown you enough. Of yeah, how Jack, we're gonna, you're, yeah. You're just absolutely it, it, amazing. So let's go to the incredible. Q and A. Let's go to the Q and A, Richard. Okay. So Brian, are you still with me? Or I'll yeah, do I'm it. here, Richard. Can you hear okay, me? Okay. Go ahead, Brian. 
Yeah, it uh, looks like a lot of the questions have been answered uh, in the back and forth, but uh, Tony has a couple here at the front end that he was asking. And uh, the first one was, um, does each laser have a different thickness? And uh, why not put a printer at, at each one? Because that's the first question. The, we do use each laser for a specific thickness still. Um, laser five only produces the products for the robot folding cell. Um, the printer has only, we, we is running an experiment on that improvement in the last probably four, four months. And they're quite expensive, they're 500 pounds each. So I haven't rushed to buy one for every laser. I've been trying to think of an easier, better way. But one operator runs multiple lasers, right? He does, yeah, yeah. One right. operator really, runs four lasers. You really only need one printer. He just pulls it out and he goes over to the printer that he needs to, he goes over to the laser that needs to set it up because he's not he's not waiting by a laser. He's running around all the no. time. No, yeah, if, yeah, exactly. That's, you right. know, yeah. So I don't know that it's necessary, but it, you could do it, but I don't know that it's yeah. Just, a, yeah. just a printer in a central location and go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other hey, questions? Brian, the, uh, second question, uh, again, from Tony is, um, is there a light curtain behind the door that was just opened, or can people just reach into the work envelope? This was on, on the, the robot, robot folding set. Yeah, to say yeah. There is, but we we disabled it for the purpose of the video. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very good, Jack. <laughs> no, uh, excellent tour, and I think we've answered all the questions. All right. Well, yeah, that's awesome. we have. I mean, we we answered them as we went through, Jack. And I mean, your your tour was so self-explanatory it was unbelievable and okay perfect you know, on behalf of ame and paul and the rest of the people that joined us we want to give you a huge big thank you yeah. uh sharing what you're doing and and obviously sharing your thinking and the engagement that you've got with your team it, it's unbelievable and i mean the four criteria that you've got behind you safety quality simplicity and speed and then then the eight wastes and i assume that's your morning meeting area as well uh it is it, it's unbelievable and the fact that people will do this every day at work and it's going to roll over to them at home as well so uh we've actually got another question how long does it take for jack to make the daily 3s and improvement videos does his team watch these in the morning meeting so that was question, you make a lot of those yeah 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 so we I edit them in the morning and it probably takes me, I edit the, the previous day's improvements the next morning and it probably takes me around five, five to 10 minutes on an wow, app on my good. phone. That's good. Maybe quicker. Yeah, maybe quicker. Yeah, uh, it's so quick and Android easy. Or, or Android or Apple? Android. I, I, I won't buy Apple. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> yes. It's a, we don't want to get into that, Paul. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I could tell he was an Android guy. I just knew it. Man. If you're from yeah. the UK, yeah. you, gotta be, you, you don't do Apple in the UK. I used to have an iPhone 4S, two of them, and they both broke. And I said, I'm never buying that piece of shit ever again. So I <laughs> no, no, never no. buy it again. <laughs> 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 they broke so, within two three weeks so yeah never again so if i say i'm gonna do something i'm gonna do it <laughs> uh, so daniel's asking how long you've been in business jack uh so i started business 2007 i was importing mainly and um i struggled with quality from importing so i started to manufacture very very slowly and it's just gone on from there as the years have gone by but now yeah. we we manufacture 95 percent of our products and import five but it used to be manufacture five percent and import 95 percent mm, good for you it's good. great mm. it's fantastic but jack again thank you. Uh, thank you thank you so much every all the comments that are coming through in the chat is just purely positive they're all solid gold and and we want to thank you so much hopefully you enjoyed the video remember like and subscribe and pass this on to other people let's change the world together and remember my app two second lean play it's all free and it has all my books in the audio version as well as some other great authors you're really going to enjoy it brought to you by paulacres.net where you'll find all paul's books and lean resources for free, free including the new two second lean play app like audible 
but free. To listen to Lean is Lean on the two-second Lean Play app at paulacres.net.